reasons that um, will keep you at a standstill in your health. And nobody wants that. So what I'll be doing tonight is I'll help you to sift through those things, get to the bottom of it, and figure out how you can get ahead in your health. So as Candy said, my name is Justin Blyden. Uh, let me close the chat out. As a matter of fact, you guys, uh, I'll be blazing through this. So if you do have questions, and I know you will, just throw them in the chat, and I will hopefully get to them at the end of the presentation. But if it's, if it's something that's really important, just put like three exclamation points, and I'll try to answer it <laughs> on spot. All right. So I'm Justin Blyden, Certified Natural Healing Coach. I was certified in keto and intermittent fasting. What that means, like she said, ketogenic is a met metabolic state. It's not so much uh, a diet as it is a way of living, like getting your body into a state of metabolizing the energy that you have or the, uh, the energy that you literally wear, which is your body fat. So on top of that, intermittent fasting, which we'll get into that as well. But if you will, I'll have a lot of information on the screen. You can screen capture or you can uh, go ahead and QR this code right here that takes you straight to my website and it'll give you a ton more information. Speaking of more information, I have a book that I have written called Change Your Mode, the same title as the business, the company that I run. This tells my story, it's my testimony. It tells you just about everything that's on the plan. It tells you the step-by-step -step what to do in an entire day of eating and living and how to literally change your mode of living. That's the whole idea. Changing your mode is not about food as much as it is about mindset. And our mindset when we approach food is the first step to changing everything else because it's the only true thing we have control over is what we put in our bodies. Yet we volunteer that away to other people. We, we outsource our health to people other than our own selves. God gave us a mind to make those decisions for ourselves. So go ahead and uh, visit Amazon if you're interested. It's in Kindle and paperback. If you like to write in your books, get it on paperback and make as many notes as you need. This is what I do. So most people, when I first started, it was about losing weight. And it's true. You will lose weight. Your body is meant to get to its healthiest form. I'm going to say that again. Your body wants to be healthy. That means that no matter how much damage you put into it, it's always going to try to revert back to its healthiest state. It's not going to try to get worse on its own. You have to put in the specific things that make it better, but it wants to get better with time. If you take all the things out of the way that are impeding that healing, then you will never see the growth. And we're going to talk about those three things. So yes, losing eight to 10 pounds, that happens in within four weeks. And uh, I have more testimonies on my site, especially on Instagram. I have a lot of stories on there. I'm very active. So what we'll talk about is, of course, what change of mode is underlying health problems, the true cost of health problems, the true remedies of health problems. Uh, so there is hope. I'm, I'm a hope dealer, not a fear dealer. So I'm the other side of the spectrum of what you hear probably much in the news or um, from everybody else. It's freaking out. I'm the guy that's like, but have you tried this? And not just once, like you live it. And how you can feel healthy again starting today. All right, so getting right into it. Three hidden reasons, inflammation, insulin resistance, hormone imbalance, right off the top. These are the three that you'll hear about. You've probably heard about these before, but you don't really know how to fine tune them and fix them. Why? Because every single one of these is obscured with medication. The minute you say you have inflammation, the doctor's gonna give you a anti-inflammatory. The minute you have insulin resistance, your doctor's gonna give you metformin, which is uh, a way to get more stuff, more insulin into the cell. Uh, he's going to give you hormone therapy or birth control or high, high T. He's going to give you hormones to help with the imbalance. And there's one bonus that we're going to talk about too. So you never really get to the root cause because you're always covering up the symptoms. So let's get into it. So these things, these three things combined or separately will cause these common aches and pains, joint pain, hip pain, knees, shoulders, stomach, gut, headaches, migraines, sinus and allergies, sore throat, which is like post-nasal drip and you have like um, 
sinus infections, that kind of thing. If it's pretty chronic, then there's a deeper problem going on there. Cold and flu and menstrual pains. These are the usual suspects, or these are the usual indicators of the top three things. So let's talk about uh, inflammation. Now, whenever you hear inflammation, I just want you to think about in, uh, tissue damage. Inflammation literally means what it, or sounds like what it means. You have swelling, pain, heat, redness, and joint immobility. So whenever you have like, say a problem, like let's say a cut or a burn, the first thing you're gonna feel is an instant rush of pain to that area. That's the nerves. Uh, then you'll have an increase in swelling. Your body's trying to rush water to the area. The pain, the water, that's the first thing we notice. The heat, you ever uh, like burn your finger or uh, get frostbite and your hand's hot? It feels hot, but it's cold to the touch. That's because all the water or the uh, blood is rushing to that area to try to get healing to that tissue because you've been exposed to some sort of damage. Redness or purpleness, whatever color you are, you're going to experience the color of uh, subcutaneous blood rushing to the area. White blood cells are necessary to help to eat whatever has breached the damage or whatever is causing that tissue damage. And joint immobility. So you have like achy joints and you can't move around a lot. Now, this isn't a problem usually if it's acute. Acutely speaking, we, we go through inflammation every single day. We come in contact with allergies, chemical irritants, infections. You know, this is something that your body is meant to do. God is intelligent. He made our bodies very intelligent and able to adapt to different pathogens and stressors and all kinds of stuff. It's amazing. It's, it's a miracle that we can make it through life with all the stuff that we're exposed to. But as you can see, all of these things don't stay acute if they keep happening. So say, for instance, you, you are around chemicals all the time. That's a chronic problem. You say if you're always having allergies because of some chemical irritant inside of your house or at the place you work, that's going to turn into a chronic problem. But allergies, same thing. Uh, we're talking about constantly, your body's constantly trying to fight something off that has breached your normal tissue development. So we're looking here at cardiovascular disease, um, neurological disease, autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis. This is the, I call this the everything hurts side of the chart right here. Ouch, my everything. Because this is where your body's inflamed literally all over. Lupus, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome. These are aggravated, or this is if you had these acute inflammation indications, they get worse over time if they're not treated at the root. So, the usual suspects for causing these things, like we talked about chemical irritants, sugar, added sugar, which usually most people will say, uh, I don't have it, doesn't have sugar because the, the front of the box says no added sugar. But if you look at it, there's actually still sugar, natural or not natural, your body still sees it as sugar. Um, and it's usually not just that thing you're eating. It's just that sugar is everywhere. It gets into your food and it doesn't let go. It's literally everywhere. Same thing with high fructose corn syrup, alcohol, caffeine, medication, stress, seed oils, uh, talking about like processed seeds. They, usually they have to do this with a, with a chemical process to literally squeeze the oil out of seeds and grains, GMOs, and they're not natural most of the time. Mineral deficiencies, eating too often, hormone imbalance, and xenoestrogens. When you see xenoestrogens, just think fake estrogens, which are mimicking estrogen. Just so happens that the foods that we eat are covered in them, glyphosate, glyphosates, uh, herbicides, pesticides, that kind of thing. So if you're not cleaning your food, which, you know, who knows what they're doing in the back of a restaurant? Um, who knows what you're doing in your own home? Are you cleaning it properly? Well, we'll find out. Either way, this stuff will kind of disrupt your hormone receptors, which in turn will cause your body to have hormone imbalances. Uh, here's a fun fact. Doctors are just now getting around to understand, understanding that this is a thing where people in the natural realm have said this for uh, ever, since vegetables were invented. <laughs> uh, it's written in books, it's, there's movies, there's documentaries, but Harvard does a study, it's all over the uh, front page. Here's August 29, 2020, just last year, they're like, wait a minute. Doctors are learning that one of the best ways to reduce inflammation lies not in the medicine cabinet, but in the refrigerator, refrigerator. By following an anti-inflammatory diet, you can fight off inflammation for 
now it's saying that for good it's, it's saying you can cure inflammation for good by eating wow that's, that's novel I, i'm gonna keep with the yellow but if you guys want to read the whole thing just take a quick shot of the screen or um just read it with me it says however some or however sometimes inflammation persists day in day out even when you are not threatened by a foreign invader that's when inflammation can become your enemy uh, many major diseases that plague us including cancer heart disease diabetes i want to put these in bold letters again including cancer heart disease diabetes arthritis depression and alzheimer's have been linked to chronic inflammation summary what you're eating is causing cancer heart disease diabetes arthritis depression and alzheimer's that's what they're just now figuring out at harvard health um but we, we know this the doctor whenever you go to the doctor and he says you have inflammation he tells you to eat better or eat more vegetables this kind of thing but uh sometimes we don't know how to do that the healthy risks of inflammatory foods not surprisingly the same foods on an inflammation diet are generally considered bad for our health including sodas refined carbohydrates as well as red meat and processed meats this isn't justin's uh research this is harvard and as of as early as the 2020 date this is the new research that they're having this isn't like a 2014 study where they're trying to fudge the data this is new data that they're saying for public consumption so just so you know every single thing that i'm citing i'm going to have a link for you can check it out yourself and the information's there they're telling you that if you eat red meat and processed meat hot dogs hamburgers whatever if you're drinking sodas and refined carbohydrates that's all the breads all the crackers cookies and the pancakes you can have is going to cause chronic inflammation. Some of the foods have been associated with increased risk of chronic disease, such as type two diabetes, heart disease, and are also associated with excess inflammation. Dr. Hugh is the one that uh, did the research. It's not surprising since inflammation is an important underlying mechanism for the development of these diseases. So here, they have a chart right here. Here's the things that you wanna do more of, anti-inflammatory foods, and things you wanna do less of, which are fried foods, sodas, refined foods. This is the fast food column right here. So I won't belay the point. You get what I'm saying. But there was a reason, like we don't eat foods anymore. We're eating a lot of empty foods, a lot of things that are food-like. They mimic food, they seem like food, they taste good. I don't even know if you can say they taste like food these days because the things that you taste these days don't even taste like they did when you were you know, a kid or whatever. But you're like, eh, this must be food. That's not what uh, was originally intended for us. In the Garden of Eden, in the Bible, the story goes, um, you had a man, a woman, and they ate of the tree of um, knowledge of good and evil, a forbidden tree. They ruined, their, they ruined everybody's day by doing this, but that wasn't the way we were supposed to go down in history. We were supposed to live as perfect beings. Uh, but because of that choice that they made, um, we are on the path to degradation. We're on a path to decline uh, our original plan for humans was to worship god chill and rest i say chill because we're supposed to have a lifestyle that doesn't raise our blood pressure every time we go into work rest because we're not supposed to work seven 24 7 28 20 uh, 8 24 8 <laughs> we're supposed to take a day to rest but we don't the days off we do more that we don't get to do because we're stuck in work tend the gardens uh name all the animals uh, the, in modern terms, spending time with them, spending time outside, spending time with pets, uh, exploring creation, hiking, like doing things. These are the, this is what we're intended to do and love each other. All these right here, they're being put on a back burner these days. I just that's all I'm gonna say about that. We come so far from our original intent. Uh, why is this? Uh, the, we have two methods here. We have two things that are gonna put you in a better state or a worse state. You have disease and you have health. Think of it like if some of you guys are numbers person, I want you to think of it like a, a deficit, just like money. Uh, you don't, you can't eat your way of, you can't balance your way out of debt. You have to do more good than the bad. You have to do more saving, more investing to get yourself out of the bad situation. When your body is breaking down faster than you can heal, it's called disease. This is what I've heard. This is when I was uh, doing all my research, I, there's so many good, you know, snippets of information. Uh, when your body is breaking down faster than you can heal disease, 
health is when your body is building up faster than it can break down. A lot of us don't get to experience this. That is extreme. When I hear this, when I, when I notice, like, I started learning all this, I was like, you guys, wake up. You have to learn this. Anybody can do it. Anyone, like literally anyone can uh, make themselves better, but we just choose not to. It's a, literally a choice because it's food and we like food and that's okay. But um, we don't treat the treats like treats. We treat the treats like food. We, we're going through a process of oxidation. Our bodies break down over time. It's, something, it's the uh, second law of thermodynamics. Uh, things in, within a closed system tend to break down or go towards decay. We see that with the avocado. Uh, when you leave it out, it's exposed to oxygen. It interacts, the molecules interact with oxygen and it breaks down. Same thing happens to our cells. Oxygen actually ages us, uh, but also our environment ages us. If we're in contact with a biological agent, a chemical agent that is not meant to be inside our bodies, then it's going to break down oxidation, causing inflammation, tissue damage. Here's a study. If you guys want to take a snippet of this, this explains and uh, by the way, the slide that I use, that's the most awesome site I ever found, is called um, pubmed.gov, P-U-B-M-E-D, P-U-B.M-E-D.gov. All the science, all the literature that you hear them speaking about on the news when they put you like a little box there with the percentages, you can go straight to that site, look up the study yourself, say inflammation cancer, inflammation cancer, black women. Information, you know, just type in exactly what you want to see. It's like the Google for scientific studies and it's public knowledge, but nobody goes here. But this is what your um, health professionals are, are referencing. And you can get all this information um, at your fingertips. I would download like crazy if I were you these days. Um, I'm not, I won't read it. I want you guys to just understand the, the concept. When you have uh, foods like we're talking about, the good foods, antioxidant foods, you're actually reducing the oxidative problem because the oxidation, just think about it like it's when electrons are interrupted by oxidants or uh, free radicals, you're knocking off a charge on the molecule. O oxidants, antioxidants add a charge back to the molecule and balance it out. So your fruits, vegetables, supplements, whatever you have, those will help to balance you out. And this is like a vitamin C molecule. It's, it's antioxidant, so it lends its electron to the unstable molecule. And by the way, oxidation isn't bad. You need to break down cancer. You need to break down certain dead tissues, but we don't get, ever get there. We don't let our bodies get to that point. So in the end, from inflammation, we get the most common health problems, diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, mood disorders, anxiety, cognitive problems, liver and kidney damage, poor vision. That list is longer, but these are the most common. Um, now, why is that important to us today? Well. Because in a study, the Journal of American Heart Association, uh, we have the evidence of why this is so important. As of November 2020, uh, an estimated 20% of uh, COVID-19 hospitalizations were diabetes, 30% were obesity, uh, 26 was hypertension, 11% was heart failure. And in a nice pretty slide that we're used to, they say consider jointly 63.5% of COVID hospitalizations are attributed to these four conditions. If you want to stay out of the hospital, 63%, 63.5% of the time, avoid these things right here. And all these are eating diseases, or they're dietary diseases. If you don't want to, if you want to eat your way out of disease, I would do these four, I would focus on these four like a laser. Every year, about 805,000 Americans have a heart attack. That's almost a million people, guys. Of these, almost more than half a million, 605,000 are at risk of their first heart attacks. Um, 200,000 happen to be people who have already had a heart attack. These are repeat offenders. Um, it's sad, these are CDC statistics. So how do you fix inflammation? Let's get on it. Here's the part no one likes, including myself. I used to hate vegetables, especially the, uh, what do you call those, Brussels sprouts and lima beans or whatever. Greens are the answer, surprise, surprise. Just like Harvard has figured out, greens are it. Why? Because they trigger healing. Minerals live inside of vegetables. It's not even alive. They're just, that's where we get the minerals from. You can't get them any other place. Every living organism gets their minerals and their nutrients. They start with plants, including sea life. Um, 
we just need to get the first hand experience with them. We need to be growing them, eating them from our own, for our own benefit. So there's over 30,000 ones you can try. So never think that you're bored with just lettuce. You shouldn't be eating lettuce anyway. There's nothing in there. But we're talking about dark leafy green vegetables. And for fats, you have avocados, you have seeds, nuts, you have all kinds of good stuff. I do veggie keto. The difference between uh, what I do and everyone else does is I don't have meat, dairy, um, carbohydrates. I keep it clean on a vegetarian diet. Where do you get your protein? Would you be shocked to know there's protein inside of your greens? <laughs> it's true. Uh, I'm being sarcastic on purpose because um, we, we'll say it all day, but until you experience it, when I say we, I mean uh, health professionals and health people, gurus will tell you, but until you experience how you don't need meat ever to survive, you won't really understand how good you can possibly feel. So I'm talking about seven to 10 cups of dark green vegetables every single day, every single day. Half in the morning, half at night. This is so necessary to get your mineral con con you know, concoction because you need 4,700 milligrams of potassium alone. And uh, to give you a scale of what that's like, you have about 300 to 400 milligrams of potassium inside of one banana. So people are like, I'll just eat more bananas. No, you're eating more carbs. You, you need more um, greens because the greens aren't gonna spike your insulin. They're not going to cause you to gain the weight you're trying to lose. So 4,700 milligrams, to, to get that much potassium, you'd have to have about 11 or 12 bananas. So I always teach my clients, first things first, let's get your cells to open up, reduce inflammation, then get some minerals in. Minerals, plant protein, electrolytes, fiber. Fiber, we need fiber so much, you guys. Um, they also contain something called sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is uh, a compound that's inside of the greens that is anti-cancer. So the study, again, a lot of fancy words and symbols. But what this is basically saying, and I want you to take a screenshot of this so you can read it later. And uh, the link website is there too. I think I put it on this page. But what this study, so and cancer, chemo prevention and health benefits, it's telling you that when they added in sulforaphane into a diet, what you have is it attacks the cancerous cells, but not the healthy cells. It leaves them alone. Wow, amazing. By the way, I didn't get into it, but keto is when your body uses fat for energy. And I think maybe we'll get into this next session, but is your own body fat. Plants that are high in sulforaphane are broccoli sprouts. I want you guys to get used to this right here. Broccoli sprouts are huge. It's like nuclear amounts of, well, not nuclear, I'd say like really massive amounts of uh, nutrition packed into these sprouts. Uh, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and bok choy. And you can be free of aches and pains and inflammation in less than two weeks. It's not just a, a catchy, marketing sentence that I'm saying there. Literally your body, once you remove the things that are causing, remember that list I showed you earlier that causing inflammation, your body literally starts the process of healing because now you've removed the blockades. That's all we need to do is get out of the way of our own healing. All right, let's get into insulin resistance because this is number two on the list. This is when your body is in lockdown. Uh, here we have a diagram. I'm gonna try to play a video for you. It doesn't always work, but I'm going to try to play this video for you because I think it's going to be beneficial. Uh, it's a quick video. When you have carbohydrates, your body recognizes it as sugar. The more fiber, the more whole the carbohydrate, which are like grains and uh, uh, greens and stuff like that, the less of an impact the sugar is going to have. But because we're talking about like the breads and the fruit juices, which is pure sugar, we're looking at the body treating it like sugar. Insulin has two jobs, it has a few jobs, but the two main jobs is to store that to feed the cell. So you need energy. Your body's going to say, okay, let's use this sugar, put it in our cell. Your cell has it, you have energy. You have too much, cell's like, no thanks, no, no more. And then it says, okay, well, we're going to store that as fat. <laughs> and, and, it, and you know, because the way we eat, it just keeps doing that. This is what happens in insulin resistance. Your normal cells, you got to tap your reserve. So Think about it this way. If you had a car with a backup tank, you fill it up. That's the food. You fill it up and then you have, you can't do anymore, right? So you fill up the backup, which is like your gas can. But with the case of insulin resistance, 
you start, you keep giving it more, it's going to shut down. So the cell is literally starving. You're not getting the fuel inside and you're not even in, tapping into the backup tank. You're just kind of um, filling up the car with gasoline and that can cause a lot of damage in your life, but also in your body. And so you have these things that start to emerge, metabolic syndrome, uh, pre-diabetes uh, and diabetes, which is high blood pressure, blood sugar. Just know that it graduates from um, things that we experience literally like 90% of the time. And this is the interesting part. One in three Americans over the age of 20, they have prediabetes. And 90% don't even know that they have it because we're just so used to it. Like think about it, whenever you eat and you feel tired or you have headache or you have brain fog, that's literally metabolic syndrome. Prediabetes is even worse when your symptoms are blood sugar levels stay high. And it's not high enough to call diabetes, but you have the symptoms and be tingling in your hands and feet numbness in your hands and feet, again, the brain fog, the, the joint pain, that kind of stuff. It's a collection of symptoms. And then you finally go to the doctor, they're like, oh, you have checked all the symptoms off on your list. You have diabetes. And this doesn't happen. It takes years, guys. It takes decades for this to build up. And we're talking about diabetes type two, obviously, but this takes a long time. So here's uh, how insulin is supposed to work. It comes from the pancreas. This does the, these are the food particles, the glucose that comes through. The, uh, uh, the insulin comes in and it takes that and it puts it in the cell. Not for the video, because this is, I think this is really cool. I, I hope it plays, because this is what it looks like inside your body. This is the pancreas. We're zooming right into what we just saw. We're releasing the food and there's glucose. Those are red blood cells and here comes the insulin going into your blood, it's going to remove all of that glucose. And you can you imagine eating a sugar powdered donut? I think about that. It stores it in the muscle tissues, in the liver tissues, and you feel this rush immediately. The job of insulin is going to be, these are insulin receptors here. What's gonna happen is you have the insulin, it comes, it opens up the receptor, and guess what happens next? you have sugar that flows right into the cell. Remember we said that it has a job of eating the cell? Well, here we go. It's gonna shoot all that glucose straight into the cell. It's gonna run the process of ATP, uh, which is food and oxygen combining to make energy. That's the, that's the idea. But that's the natural way. What happens is if you have too much, think about a, a pitcher and a catcher. You have them throwing one ball, right? No big deal. You have three catchers, three uh, catchers throwing the ball at once, or like think about a dozen catchers throwing the ball at the pitcher. He's not gonna catch all of them. He's gonna get damaged in that process. So this is what happens. You have a damaged receptor because you have too much insulin present in your blood. So that's part of the reason why you're going into insulin resistance. Now inside your body, glucose builds up, uh, if you notice how it happens, and also your insulin starts to build up. Eventually, your liver starts, stops communicating and saying, it's like, nope, you have too much, no thanks. You don't have any acknowledgement. So the pancreas is like, oh, you must need more. Let's pump more out. So it starts to send more insulin out. This is what you'll hyperinsulinemia. It's a bad day. Because here's the thing. Remember I said 90% of us have it? We're supposed to have a teaspoon. Just one teaspoon is what triggers insulin. And we're talking about four or five grams, right? And this is a one and a third gallon of blood inside of a 165 pound person. But the average uh, American has about 31 teaspoons every single day. And it's the hidden sugars we don't know about. That's what does it, that's what adds up the tally. Think about it like a slice of um, regular bread might have like 10 to 14 grams. And you drink some orange juice. It's not orange juice. It's definitely sugar and orange flavor but you have about 14 to 28 grams. And you're not just drinking like a cup, you're just, you're filling it, refilling it, drinking a glass. So think about that. You're just adding tons and tons of sugar. Your body's like, no, no more, no more of that. So of course, insulin triggers, like we said, the normal list. Please take a shot of this if you can, because most people will say sugar, yeah, 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 sugar. But then there's so many other things. We're talking about frequent eating, refined grains, excessive protein, that's like protein people that are in the gym they're drinking protein shakes the you know milk-based protein shakes 
they add sugar to make it taste better because it tastes like garbage. Um, you don't have to have it that way. There's so many healthy versions of that, but uh, then we have protein and carbs. Can you think of a protein and a carb? It's just about every sandwich that you have, every fast food burger and bun you can think of. Fat and carbs, you're talking about the same thing, like a bacon and cheese burger. Um, vitamin D deficiency, potassium deficiency. And deficiencies will manifest as cravings. We're going to talk about that too. But um, hyperinsulinemia, how do you know that your high insulin is too high? Well, the short term, you'll have high blood pressure, which is going to, the insulin causes your blood vessels to restrict, vascular restriction. Sodium retention, now you have the receptors that are blocked. So your body's not taking in the electrolytes. So now sodium is building up and you have water retention. High cholesterol, high triglycerides, um, muscle weakness, brain fog, PCOS. These are all the things that can happen if not handled soon. In the, in the acute, a decreased concentration, vision loss, increases inflammation, increases stiffness. Long-term, um, this is old age. This is like when you're getting up to your 50. Life expectancy is about 72, 73 years old as of 2020. This is what you're expecting the second half of your life. The first half is building up all these problems. The second half is dealing with all these. This is a sad part of uh, where we are. We just kind of accept it. I was actually driving down the highway and I looked to my right and I saw a, a Walgreens with a drive through going this way and a Hardee's on the other side of the street going this way. It's like we're so used to it. And there were lines at both. There were lines at both drive throughs I'm like, this is like a cartoon. This can't be real. But yeah, people are just like, you know, I just got to stop by CVS and get my heart medicine. I need to stop and get my blood pressure medicine. Not thinking that that's not the way it has to be. Stroke, cancer calcified arteries, Alzheimer's, stroke, dementia, early risk of death. That's at the bottom of the list, but no one seems to think that that's a bad enough to start eating the way they're eating. So you have your glycemic index, which indicates how much sugar is affecting or uh, the foods you're eating are affecting your blood sugar. On one end, you have options. You have a uh, monk fruit, stevia, salatol. Most people will know this as diabetic sugar. It's what diabetics eat. But you can, anybody can use it. It's birch bark. Anybody can use it. Sugar is just sugar. It's been processed so badly. All that stuff is the crystal of the plant. And it does nothing for you nutrition-wise. It gives you a lot of energy, but nothing nutrition-wise. So what you want to stay away from, take a shot of this, is these are the, probably the worst of them. Sugar, brown sugar, honey. Now, I put honey on there for a reason. If you go to like Dollar General, here's some homework. Go to Dollar General or a cheap honey. And you'll see that it's honey, ingredient number one. Number two is corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, which also is on that list. Dextrose, maltodextrin, sucralose, um, which is half. Uh, chlorine, aspartame, which is a neurodegenerative compound, breaks down your brain. The good stuff, xylitol, stevia, all these are made from plants. Every sweetener that you can think of is made from plants, just about, unless it's made in a lab. The birch bark, the stevia plant, monk fruit is a monk berry. Erythritol is an alcohol sugar. You can make it from dates. Um, coconut sugar, molasses, which is the extracted part of the cane plant. So you have the sugar that's removed and the crystalline substance. The white sugar goes on the, goes in everything. And then you have the molasses. Everybody's like, oh, that's what my grandma used to use. That's where all the nutrition from the plant is. But no one wants to eat that stuff. That's sad. Unless it tastes like a candy bar or something. <laughs> Uh, so insulin, this is what we're looking at, guys. We're looking at dementia, stroke, blockage of the arteries. Remember, we're talking about weakening. The cells, A, aren't getting fed, so there's no way to build new cells. So you're having weakened um, tissue, fatty liver, fats growing around the organs. Because like we said, once you're done feeding the cell, now you got to store fat. Now you have too much fat, where is it going to go? There's nowhere else for it to go in the cell. There's no backup. So now it starts to deposit fat around the organs. It's called visceral fat diabetes, heart disease. And what's affected first is your small blood vessels, your capillaries, your artery, or your capillaries mostly. So this is what we're talking about is like, uh, for diabetes, uh, it's the number one cause of lower limb amputations, blindness, and kidney loss. I can't think of anything worse. You don't get any of those things back. Your sight, your legs, or your kidneys, which filters your blood. 
it should be scary enough to do something about, is what I'm saying. You, you, we don't think about it. We, we focus on the superficial, the things on the outside we can see. We put makeup on it or we try to hide it in some way, but we're not paying attention to the deeper parts. Your cells are starving to death. So you have your function, you have your form, your outside, as our brother would say, you have your outside form, which we're trying to focus more on, but the function, here we have an issue with our toes. You have tingly toes, tingly fingers, numb toes. Um, you're starting to get blurry vision. Chances are your arteries, or, I'm sorry, your capillaries are getting no blood flow. And so you have nerve damage because the nerves aren't being nourished. So number one, ditch the carbs. Let me give you an aerial view of this delicious breakfast table. This is how we eat breakfast, uh, especially if you're a traveler, if you're a nurse, if you're a teacher. These are quick, they're delicious, and we move on. And it has fruit-like substances in it, so we think we're doing something. This is killing us. Like This is the first thing we have first thing in the morning. So you got to ditch them. Uh, for how long? Well, remember we talked about the deficit. How long does it take you to save out of a deficit for money? Same thing with your body. Not, the rules apply. You got to do the work to get out of disease, but you can prevent disease by staying away from these things too. 80%, 20%. Intermittent fasting. Uh, sounds scary because it sounds like a starvation diet. It's not. Intermittent fasting lends to the idea that you only need two meals a day. And think about it this way. If you were dropped on a desert island, right? You would have to find food. Or let's say you get stranded on a desert island. You, you, get, you have to find food. So you eat fish, coconut, greens, whatever. And then you'd have to move to the other part of the island to find other foods. I don't know if you ever watched that show, Naked and Afraid. I love that show. But every time you have to, you're dependent on your resources and you got to find the resources. Once you find them, you might have to move around a lot. We don't have that problem. We have 7 Eleven and we have the deli downstairs at work or um, the snack bar, the uh, nurse's station. That's what we have. So it's easy to like eat constantly around the clock. If you're doing that, your insulin is spiked. Let me show the next slide. This is the two meals. You're spiking insulin twice, or maybe, maybe three times if you're new to this whole thing. But imagine eating this table around the clock. You have a spike around eight o'clock, spike at 10 o'clock, spike at 12, spike at two, spike at six. You know, you keep spiking your insulin, so you're not really getting rid of it. This is what I send my clients to help them um, get that under control. Pull the drain on the insulin. When I say pull the drain, I'm talking about getting your liver to process everything out. We're talking about working with fatty liver. Once you work with the fatty liver, we're talking about um, then getting your liver to work the way it should. Because when a fatty liver, when you have a fatty liver, you have a slow metabolism. Because not only, we're gonna get into hormone imbalances, but not only are you not processing fat out the body, or you're not processing hormones out the body, but your, your thyroid can't exchange T4 to T3, which means now you're stuck in a body that's just being toxic. Nothing's being let out of the body, even if it's good. Too much of anything is bad. But when you have too much, too many hormones, too many of one type of uh, compound or mineral or whatever, sodium, um, you're going to have an imbalance in everything else. So number three, hormone imbalance. Now, these are the most common hormone issues. If someone says, yeah, I have a hormone issue. We talked about insulin already, but do you guys know about cortisol and adrenaline? We know about adrenaline, but cortisol is the stress hormone. Adrenaline is supposed to get you away from the stress. Cortisol is supposed to protect you from the stress. If you have a stressful job, those are elevated all the time, like all the time. So that stores fat around your midsection that um, burns out your adrenals. So you're not able to tolerate people that you come into contact with, tolerate stressful situations which makes you snack and makes you uh, a stress eater, emotional eater. You have estrogen, progesterone. These are, again, things that we cannot see, but all of us have these, all of us, because we're all made of the same things. Uh, estrogen, progesterone, yeah, even men have estrogen, but women are estrogen dominant the way that their bodies go because they're exposed to the same chemical stressors. They're exposed to, we'll get into a second, what they're exposed to, same thing with men. Men are meant to have more testosterone than estrogen. Women are supposed to have more estrogen than testosterone. 
and the one that makes it all possible is progesterone made by uh, cholesterol. <laughs> but we have medications that reduce cholesterol production. So now we have a hormone imbalance because of a medication. Thyroid, DHT, um, and this is testosterone right here. DHT is basically what's going to be the bad form of testosterone, which burns out the hair follicles, makes you go bald, both men and women. So uh, we talked about insulin, you have ghrelin and leptin. So let's, let's think of it this way. Your body is a communication network, right? The brain, the hypothalamus sends, it's like the master control. So whenever something's happening with your organ in this region of the network, it sends a signal and says, hey, um, food's coming in. And it's like, okay, let's release something else. Let's say, for instance, you are hungry. That's ghrelin. Ghrelin is the, I call it the gremlin. If your stomach's growling, it's the gremlin. That's how I remember stuff. Ghrelin is going to say, hey, I'm hungry. You're going to be like, oh, I'm hungry. Let's get some food in there. And you'll reach for a candy bar. And I'm sorry, I get, I get really frustrated because of marketing. They tell you you're not you when you're hungry and they tell you to grab a Snickers. Let's not even talk about Snickers. Let's talk about a functional snack. Let's talk about a, a, one of those healthy snacks, those healthy granola. Turn that thing over and read it. You'll see how much high fructose corn syrup, how much fake food is in that thing. All it does is get your blood sugar high to get you out of that situation. It raises their blood pressure. It gets you all hyped up and then it crashes you right after. Um, I'm breezing through this really fast because I want to get all my points in, but I just want to remember, remind you to take screen grabs of this stuff. So what happens is leptin, which helps on so many levels, you do some research on leptin, you're going to learn that this is a bad, this is bad news. The more fat you have, the fat is what's going to produce this leptin, right? So say for instance, you're a person that has very little fat. Well then, you know, you, you, you're thin, you're average, whatever. You're going to have just enough going in to tell your hypothalamus, okay, we're done. No more food. Stop eating. But if you are overweight, here's the tricky part. The more fat you have, the less leptin you have. You would think that it's the opposite, but it's not. The more fat you have, the more your body's pumping out leptin. So your body's receptors are starting to downgrade, which means it's shutting off. Just like insulin, you got to think of it this way. If you have multiple signals going into a satellite dish is going to cause disturbance, right? Or like I said, that, that pitcher and catcher, if you have a bunch of pitchers throwing at a catcher, yeah, I should have said it that way. If you have a bunch of pitchers throwing at a catcher, they can only catch one of those balls at a time, one of those hormones at a time. So it's going to cause damage to that receptor. And so now you have a lot of leptin in your system. And so now you're not going to feel full. And ghrelin is going to be turned up because you're eating the garbage that makes you hungry. In your stomach, you have um, two sensors. It's the expansion sensor and the satiation sensor. Expansion would be coming from fiber. Like on a desert island, you eat a bunch of bush, you're going to feel full. Uh, the satiation would come from coconuts, which are the fat. You have the fat that goes in, makes you feel nice and satiated. You're like, okay, I'm going to take a, a nap because that's all there is to do on this island. But maybe I should eat a little bit more because I got to go across the way there. By the way, your body would stay in ketosis because now you have to use your body fat for energy because there is no sugar coming in. You have no sugar. The way that sugar is supposed to work is you're supposed to use it. Um, blood sugar is meant to be used. If you eat it, you use it. Uh, sitting at a desk is not using it. Walking, parking your car down at the long end of Walmart and then walking in, that's not using it. You're, you're just gonna be using just enough to get you to that front door. We're talking about is burning it off. We're talking about intense exercise to where you burn off your excess blood sugar, which then goes into your reserves. Now you have to use some kind of form of energy, which is your fat, which is ketones. So you'll have increased thirst. You'll be sleepy after meals, increased urination at night, especially sleepy, trouble concentrating, weakness, tingling sensation, high blood pressure, restlessness. Take a picture of this screen as well, because then on the other side, we're looking at, again, the stuff that keeps us in that drive through line at Walgreens. Kidney damage, cardiovascular damage, um, peripheral neuropathy, that's the tingling in the fingers and the toes. Um, and these are the things that when it gets really bad, this is like after a good five, 10 years of damage. Um, all the signals and signs are there. There's a lot of red flags before you get to that place.
So you have the candy bar incident, you eat it, and then you have a dip in your blood sugar because your insulin spikes to the height of your blood sugar, then it drops again because you have done nothing nutritious with the food you just ate. All you did was give it a bunch of sugar, which you cannot use. And your body's trying to get rid of that sugar, which is your, why you're always in the bathroom, why you're always peeing at night. Your body's almost being sneaky about it. It's like, okay, he's asleep. Let's get this sugar out of here <laughs> while we can before he gets up and puts more. Um, yeah, same thing with alcohol. Alcohol is also terrible on your body. Your body tries to get toxins out however it can. That's why you have bad skin. That's why you have inflammation in the liver. Your body's really trying to get that stuff out. So yeah, take a picture of this screen here. Ton of things that it all adds up to. Low blood sugar is not just as unideal as having high blood sugar. But what we're trying to do is ideally balance your blood sugar. You can, and people, whenever they hear you have blood sugar that's 70 versus like 120, they're like, that's not possible. My doctor is going to tell me my blood sugar is too low on keto. That's fine. Keto is a completely different world. When we're talking about blood sugars. Once it's stabilized at 70, you're going to have energy coming from another source, which is your ketones versus your blood sugar. Um, let's see. Oh, here's what I was talking about earlier. We're talking about the hormone imbalances of estrogen and progesterone. So I work with 90% women. And what usually happens is this. You have, um, when you're 15, some people 12, you get put on birth control. And as I start to research this stuff, I'm like, what? why do we do that? Why? Just in case. We don't want you to have headaches. We don't want you to have... Um, cramps. We don't want to, you know, they're trying to help with the symptoms. They're making the problem worse because from the age of 15, all the way to 55, that's life. <laughs> you need those hormones to be balanced early so you can survive what happens in your later years, which is menopause, perimenopause. The more damage you cause to your uh, sexual hormones in the early part of your days, which is adding hormones in, because when you add hormones in, your body becomes lazy. It doesn't want to make its own. So whether you do it involuntarily or uh, ignorantly, uh, your body's going to react. So the more you put in early, the harder your time is going to be later. So if you have a hard period when you're younger, you like, you know, gain weight and you have bad skin and you don't handle it, then you're going to have a bad menopause and perimenopause. That's because your adrenals are now being converted. The, the, the work of the ovaries is now being translated or given over to the adrenals. If you live a stressful life, you're going to have a hard time on the adrenals, and that's when they're going to try to attempt to put you on more hormones, as if that helped in the first place. Oh, you know what? <laughs> you started your life on hormones that weren't made from your body. Let's put you on hormones that weren't made for your body, and the hope that fixes the problem. It doesn't. It helps with the symptoms. Estrogen imbalance. We're talking about, and this is one of the most common. We have a lot of different hormones going around, but when we're thinking about estrogen imbalance, it's usually high estrogen. And for women in menopause, it's low estrogen. But I'm going to focus on the high one because uh, this is something that you can prevent for menopause. Weight gain in the hips, thighs, buttocks with a lower stomach bulge. History of PMS. Weight gain, bloating, ovarian cyst, cyclic fatigue, cyclic pain in the lower back and hips. Oops. Um, Cyclic meanings, you, you live about 72 years, so you have 70 cycles, right? Oh, I'm sorry, no, you have about 50 cycles, uh, 50, 54 cycles. But basically what you're looking at here is from the time you start your period until the time you stop having a period as a woman, you're gonna, you either can ask yourself, when I mean, you do the numbers, do I wanna feel this way every single month for the rest of my life? Because you're talking about now menopause, and if you have treated your body poorly in the beginning, the next half, all the way to 100, your adrenals have to handle it. So we're talking about, oh my goodness, the, the chain of damage just goes deeper and deeper if you don't handle that now. And I'm being vague on purpose because there's just so much to talk about. Infertility, hot flashes, night sweats, that's when a lot of people can relate to it. Vaginal dryness, cyclical acne, mood swings, P, uh, PMS, that's not supposed to happen. You don't have to have it happen. You can actually take care of that. If you have a very easy period, you're going to have a very easy menopause. So it's, if you have those things popping up, it's time for you to make the changes in your diet and your lifestyle to ease those and just know, be like, have peace of mind to know that um, 
you're going to have a very easy transition into the last half of your life. What are the benefits of hormone replacement therapy? Because this is what happens when you have taken birth control your whole life. Now your hormones have tanked and you need to switch it up because they're out of balance, like clockwork. Well, they help with hot flashes, vaginal dryness, and problematic symptoms of menopause, like night sweats and itchy. That's it. That's basically what they do. They give you a hormone, which by the way, is not made by human hormones. You ever wonder where you get hormones for hormone replacement or birth control? Oh, I'll tell you. Um, here is an article. Here's a list. You can actually read this article if you like. This is from PETA. Leave it to PETA to give you the lowdown on things you don't want to know uh, about the foods that you eat. So when you're, when you're taking this stuff, right, it's telling you right here. I wonder if I have that highlighted. Yeah, let me read this whole thing. Uh, every year, doctors prescribe hormone replacement therapy, also referred to as menopausal hormone therapy, to hundreds of thousands of women of experiencing menopausal symptoms. One of the HRT drugs that was, has historically been among the most widely prescribed is made from animal waste. The drug Primarin, an estrogen therapy drug currently manufactured by, hmm, interesting, Pfizer. I wonder, I wonder if you guys know what that is. Um, formerly Wyeth Pharmaceuticals, which also produces prom, uh, Prempro, an estrogen progestin, which is a fake form of progesterone combination. Uh, both drugs contain horse urine. Yeah, specifically pregnant mare's urine. Uh, not only has this form of HRT proved to be dangerous to humans, horses raised for their urine also are kept and combined and pregnant and their foals often end up in the slaughterhouse. Uh, yeah, so here's the thing. This is what one of the doctors says. In 2002, the Women's Health Initiative, a study of 16,000 women using PremPro uh, was abruptly halted by the federal government after it concluded that HRT raises a woman's risk of having stroke by 41%, a risk of suffering a heart attack by 29%, a risk of developing cancer by 26%. One in four, that's what these, this is, this is one in four women. Uh, a follow-up study of women a decade later found that in addition to an increase in breast cancer rates, the cancer tended to be advanced and cause death. Probably not a good side effect of Pfizer's medication. Uh, so not to belabor this point either. Just know what they're saying here is basically the juice ain't worth the squeeze. Women who took estrogen plus progesterone are more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer than women who took the placebo. Um, yeah, take screen grabs of this. There's a lot to read, a lot to sift through. Um, actually, also ask me for it, and I will send you a list of all the cited sources today, uh, links that you can get to. But I want to get to some other stuff. Here's a hormonal balance, all natural way to do it. These are some supplements. And by the way, I <laughs> the really good thing about this is you have um, pure, I forget the name of the store, <laughs> Pure Life. You have Pure Life that has all these supplements. I'm sure of it in their store. I usually refer my clients to Amazon since I have clients all over the world. But if you can find a really good local spot, go there because you have people that can talk to you. I, I hope that the people there, there's enough people to distribute their knowledge there. So when you walk in, you, you say, I heard about salt palmetto. What does it do? The bottle's not going to tell you as much as you need to know. You need to know why you're going in there, how to take it. And that's why health coaches are important because it's a whole different side of the spectrum. You have the doctors that give you one thing to fix one thing, and they say, let's see how it works in six months. Then you have the other side, which is this will fix this one thing because it helps the organ. It doesn't add anything to your body. It helps the organ heal. And that's what these, this stuff do. It doesn't add anything hormonal to your body. It adds the nutrition that those specific organs needs to heal. Saw palmetto for the ovaries. Sea kelp, which is iodine, is really good for the ovaries, the breasts, the thyroid. You need this stuff. I mean, we really don't get our iodine as much as we think. And the where, the, where it is attached is salt, like table salt, not anything good. But sea kelp is a really pure form of iodine. Red clover, black cohosh. And you'll find these in some combination too. And if you go on the websites and you look it up on like government sites, they'll say 
there's no evidence. Sure, okay. If you if you like to say that, that's fine. But what health people and naturopaths know is it works. How it works, that's because God said it would, and he says that it can. We don't know how they work, but we just know that they do work. We, and studies, they don't like to take uh, anecdotal studies. Like if someone says, hey, I tried this, it really worked. There's no evidence, there's no studies because they don't fund the studies. If you have a multi-billion dollar corporation like Pfizer, they'll do this. And I mentioned this before, they'll take the plant, they'll take the herb, they'll take the root and they'll shake it and they'll say, is there money in it? That's what they'll do. If there's no money in it, they won't, they won't mess around with it. Like for instance, wild yam cream. They have made progestin, which is the fake form of progesterone, out of wild yam cream, wild yams. Uh, they synthesize it in a lab, but you can take wild yam cream, rub it on your inner thighs, rub it on your belly, rub it on your buttocks, and it will encourage the body to make its own progesterone, which balances estrogen. I use this one all the time. Um, raspberry leaf tea really helps with pain uh, during periods, anytime, like from young age all the way up, take it the whole week, drink it the whole month if you have a bad fibroids, anything like that, drink it, it's gonna help. Again, you'll look up black hohosh, they'll say there's no evidence, but yet it works. Imagine that. So take a picture of this if you'd like. Um, so many details to go into. Like I said, go to your local uh, health food store and they can explain more in detail. But take notes, do your research. Like go, not just go on Amazon, read all they have to read. Compa That's a great place to do research, by the way, because you can research brands. And then when you find your brand, see if your local health food store has it. Then go in, find it, talk to your person at the shelf or behind the counter or whatever. It's, it's, it's an experience. It's a lifestyle. You have to want to heal that bad where you'll do your research. Most people give up. Um, thyroid, we have hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, we have hyper, hypo, hypo. Hyper is too functioning too fast, which means you can't gain weight. Hypo is more common where you gain weight all over really quickly, like usually attached to a stress event. Um, bad relationships, bad job. Um, I've heard it once said that it's almost like emotionally someone's squeezing your throat, it's almost like damaging your throat. So you don't feel like you can speak up. You don't feel like you can uh, emotionally get what you need to say off your chest, literally, it damages the thyroid. And so you go into this uh, autoimmune, some, some have uh, pushing, some have other things, but just the one thing you need to know is your liver needs to be a top form and function in order for this to work. Because your liver is what translate 80%, is what all 80% of the translate, trans, 80% of the work is done in the liver. Let's just say that with the iodine. So add in sea kelp, get your liver intact, and you're already starting to heal the process. Liver for anything, by the way, or else what you're looking at is hair loss. Um, you're looking at dry skin. You're looking at proteins not being synthesized properly. You got to get this liver in check. I focus on this because this is like the filter for everything that comes into your body, but the kidneys are what your blood is filtered through. And so once you start learning all these things, you're not made out of like car parts, you're made out of organic tissue that can be fixed. Your liver can regenerate 100%, but you gotta take care of other parts of your body that don't grow back, your kidneys do not. Um, these are adrenals, I was actually talking about them, <clears throat> but they are what, where adrenaline is released from into the blood. And again, after the ovaries go into retirement, the adrenals kick in and release the hormones that your ovaries once did. If you have burnt out your adrenals through stress, through a hard life, you're gonna have a hard menopause. Just saying the facts, I'm just the messenger. Um, same thing with your nervous system. Like you gotta treat yourself much better than staying in sympathetic mode, which is survival mode, fight or flight as they call it. All of the, this whole side of your body, this whole side of your um, nervous system is what gets you to either run from situations, both physically and mentally, or it's um, getting to fight them. So if you're a very aggressive person, you're always fighting everybody, you all know these people. Um, and the ones that are quiet, the ones that take the hits, they're pretty much um, taking it internally. And it really damages your adrenals, your, your nerves, your brain. It, it, people, they have said that whenever you're in, in pain, your brain literally shrinks. 
and it's not good for the rest of your system. We're talking about GI problems and everything. So we need to get your parasympathetic to check your sympathetic. They work in tandem. So while you're increasing your heart rate from running, your parasympathetic calms it down. It's your whole, your autonomic nervous system. Wish I could get into that. Lastly, the number one, the bonus for the number four is inconsistency. This is one of the secrets that if you were to apply this, if you just were to do this one thing, pick one good thing that you want to change about yourself, just one, just pick vegetables, for instance, you're going to see progress. And this is what this is about. This is about progress. If you don't have consistency, you won't see health. You will always be in a deficit because your body, everything around you, like you said, is constantly breaking down. You're constantly going towards decay. So you can stop it. You can arrest that process. Here's an easy way to do it. Here's the eight true remedies, fresh air, getting sun. These are every single day. Being self-restrained or having self-control, resting. Again, like you said, not working 28, seven or 28, eight. Uh, you don't have, we have the same amount of time, 168 hours in a week. You need to budget that time to rest. God has already done it. He's got a schematic for us. It's called resting on the Sabbath day and literally keeping it holy, which means all you're doing is refreshing your mind. Think of it this way. It's not just bodily rest. It's literally saying, okay, God, if I spend time with you, you promise to recharge my mind. So all that stress from the week, I can now handle it differently on Sunday or Monday, whatever you go in. But we don't look at rest that way. We look at rest like, oh, I got to go shopping. I, I got to shop. I got to mow the lawn. I got to clean the gutters. And we call that rest from our day job. It's not the rest that God wants for us. He wants us to literally rest in him. And it's for our benefit. Exercise. I know this is, these two sound kind of uh, antithesis, to be honest. But uh, exercise charges your body. Like we said, once you're sweating, once your blood's flowing, all that old garbage, as you start to get better and better, as we start to implement the new minerals, the new raw materials, your body gets rid of the old and introduces the new. How in the world can you heal if you don't have new raw materials coming in? I don't know how that's possible. But once you're starting to get the vegetable content, you're starting to eat the way that you should, you're starting to balance out these hormones. Now exercise can go into work. So it's not so much on January 1st or 2nd, you jump into the gym. No, 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 no. Take a minute. Fast. Intermittent fast. Rest. Start there where your body can now detox and then work yourself into muscle building. Because here's the thing. You're going to lose a little, you're going to lose, lose a little bit of inflammation, but you're not going to see the muscle grow. You're going to be in pain because your body's still inflamed. And then you're going to quit. So there's an order to all this. So that's why I say get a coach. Plug. I'm not sorry. <laughs> get a coach because they know the process. Doctors will refer you to a dietitian. They know like what's supposed to be good for you, which is what's on a chart that is prescribed by the medical system. So it's, they have their own system. You have coaches and other medical practitioners on the other aisle that are saying, um, did you, how did you eat? What did you have to eat? Uh, what did you, what was stressed you today? Let's have a conversation. It's a relationship. As your coach, I, I am hard on you, but it's because you know that you want the goals you want. I just help you get it. And if you can't get a coach, get a friend who knows more than you. I like playing this clip because um, your performance is raised 200% by just having someone that knows more than you do. That could be a kid. That could be a, a spouse. That could be um, a YouTube buddy, whatever. But get somebody that knows more than you so they can push you. Because it's not that you don't want to. It's just that you don't know how to execute in order, in the right order. And of course, trust in God. Um, this is where the Sabbath comes in. This is where that rest comes in because I don't know how people do it, to be honest. I don't know how you go 28, eight, inventing days, inventing time to work and not having trust in God because the world will have you grabbing onto things um, and holding on to them so tight. Like once you get it, you're afraid of losing it. See what I'm saying? So now you don't sleep. But it says in Psalms 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Once you know that God is your back, that whole verse becomes real to you. Bursting out, even though you feel like garbage, 
feel like I know you got my back. Oh, it's an amazing feeling. So pray and trust God's promises. All of them are true. God cannot lie. It says in Jeremiah 17, 14, oh Lord, if you heal me, I will be truly healed. If you save me, I'll be truly saved. My praises are for you alone. The people in the Bible weren't perfect. The people in the Bible were in pain a lot of the times too. They were scared. They were real flesh and blood human beings, but they understood the more you put on God's, the more you have him holds your burdens and your, your stress and everything, the more you'll celebrate. You'll be like, this sucks, but thank you for having my back. And also, this is about faith. This isn't about faith healing as much as it's about your faith. It's about belief. The scientific community, the medical community, they believe in what they're doing. The money backs up what they're doing. People must love what we're doing because we're trillionaires. The health community has to literally build relationships and reassure that a plant is going to make you well because it's not the plant. The people that do this natural thing know that the plant gets the stuff out of the way for your body to heal itself. And that's a, a homeopathic way of thinking, but that's what the Bible talks about. So I trust that God knows what he's doing. Um, but yeah, you, you got to trust your God. You got to put your trust in God. He's even in Exodus, the beginning of the Bible, he talks about um, how he is the Lord who heals. He says, as he brought them out of the Red Sea, he says, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, you pay attention to his commands, keep his decrees. Um, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. All throughout the Bible, same God, same promises. Daniel 1, 8 through 17, if you haven't read that, it's about the three Hebrew boys that got led into the captivity. It tells the story of these three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And they were captured, they were scared, they were alone, but they still had their upbringing. The way they were learned was just to eat clean, get into ketosis, which by the way, they were in ketosis. For 10 days, they decided to eat only beans and vegetables mashed up. And that's literally, I, I, don't, I don't make you on my plans eat beans and vegetables mashed up, but when you keep it like that, your body is now only healing. It's only using fat for energy. It's only detoxifying. It's amazing what you can do when you get it in balance. It's hard at first. Most people try veganism and they're like, I tried it once, like, what? I'm not a vegan, but if you try it once, that's not living the lifestyle. That's a diet. And you also, you didn't give enough chance. You didn't give it time because it takes time. Um, but I, I encourage you to read this. Daniel 1, 8 through 17. Basically, they ate this way for 10 days. After 10 days, the, uh, his, his supervisors came and looked them over. They were healthier than everybody else in the kingdom. They were eating all the king's stuff. So we're looking at that right now. You have people that will tell you to eat meat only, getting secondhand nutrients. If that's your thing, cool. But I'm just like, why don't I just get it straight from the source and see if it does the same thing? And that's exactly what you see that happens. It does the exact same thing. Uh, once you have it in balance, what change your mode can help with? I can help you understand health, which means your history of health. Like when you get that picture of us going, excuse me, what's going on in your body, you can be like, ah, I get it. I remember what happened. I had a death in the family, went through a divorce. Um, my job, I hate my job. I don't feel like I have purpose. You're understanding health as a total, not just this one thing that uh, happened, like this one food that you ate. It's not about that. It's about the whole picture of your health. And we do that with tracking um, data points. And over time, you track how you feel, you take notes, you journal, you take responsibility for your health because you're the only person that can do that. Just like with your finances, you're not gonna have somebody knock in your door. And maybe you will someday, you know, the way we live these days in the United States, somebody might knock on your door and tell you how to use your money. Right now, that's not happening. But for now, the same thing with your health. They cannot kick in your door and they won't make you live better. You have to get yourself out of this deficit and do it yourself because they don't have the answers out there. They have the answers for your pain and your symptoms. I'm not gonna say that there's no truth in that, but. If you want to heal, you want to overcome, that's what we're talking about. When he says, sorry, I want to I get this again. Heal me, I will be truly healed in Jeremiah. He's not talking about halfway healing. He's talking about healing all the way. That's, a, that's the God I believe in. And I've seen it over and over and over again with my clients. And I'm so proud to see that. Symptoms of prediabetes, weight gain, weight loss, high blood pressure, GI issues, hormonal issues, getting fit. 
once once we get you out of deficit, which is my job, I do my best to get you fit. If you're willing to keep up with me, if you're local, I usually take you on the stairs. And uh, if you're not, I can hand you off to a virtual coach, virtual um, fitness coach who will also kick your butt virtually. <laughs> so um, take a scan of this QR code. This is my website. I have six week plans, 12 week plans, and I also have uh, six month plans for those that are really digging in and digging out of that hole. And for those that are on the call today, I wanted to extend this if you're interested. It's a 10 day challenge, it's a free 10 day challenge. And what I do is like a simulation, not even a simulation, it's like a, a, it's like a 14 day challenge. It's a 14 day way for you to plug into what I'm talking about, get yourself fit, I give you meal plans, I give you um, charts, I give you day by day what to expect day by day. You have access to my app, which is really cool. The app is one of those apps where you can communicate, we can text each other, we can track your data points, whatever you want to track for however long you want to track. And you have access to it once you sign up for a plan, you have access to it, access to it for a year following the plan. So if you're interested, just hit me up on Instagram, the Veggie Keto Coach, or change your mode. And we can get started whenever you're ready. And I pray that you are ready today. Thank you guys, that's my presentation. And thank you for sticking with me this long. Thank you, Justin. It may have been long, at least I don't think so, but it was worth it. I know everybody on this um, in this Zoom meeting will say it was well worth it. And I know you were speaking to me. I don't know if you're speaking to everybody else on here, but you were speaking to me. And you know, one thing that I got out of this, I don't know if, if anybody have any questions. I didn't see any questions come into the chat. Um, did anybody wanna ask a question? I'll put it out there now before I make a closing comment. This will be available also because the meeting was being recorded. Any questions, you can unmute yourself at this time and ask your question. Somebody asked about uh, the fatty liver, about treating the fatty liver. So I would say with the fatty liver, you automatically just stop eating sugar, first of all. That's the first thing, just stop it, just stop it, stop it. If you need a list of sweeteners, if you have a sweet tooth, I can help you with that. The thing about sugar is as your body starts to let go of sugar more, you're, you're gonna feel the weakness, you're gonna feel the low blood sugar, right? But the idea is that you want to replenish the sugar that's being let go out of the body with actual minerals. Sugar is a mimicker. It's a, it's a, a, a placebo, basically. It acts like minerals because it takes the place of minerals, but it doesn't do anything. So what you do is you take pinches of sea salt, put it in your water, do a fast. You're going to fast. Even while you're intermittent fasting, drink sea salt in your water. And this, is, this usually gets people, they're like, you want me to drink salt water. You're drinking a, about three pinches of sea salt in your water. That's going to replace the sugar that's leaving your body and keep your blood volume stable. Um, once that happens, uh, now you're looking at getting into ketosis. Like what we said, it's going to take 10 to 14 days. Some people longer, some people shorter. Uh, it's very important to know that you're going to see progress. The longer you've been in um, overweight state, the longer it's gonna take for you to get it off, but you will feel it before you see it because your body has to chip away at the, great question, by the way, your body has to chip away at the liver fat and the visceral fat around the organs first. Because again, your body knows what it's doing. It's like, okay, I know you want it. I know we're changing, something's changing. Let's use the energy. Just think of fat as energy around the organs first. It's right here. And then we'll go for the superficial fat, the fat that you can see, the fat that we hate to look at and everything, blah, blah, blah. But what's more important is that fatty liver. And there's something you can take a B vitamin called choline, choline and inositol. You can find it um, at Pure Life, <laughs> probably, at, or on Amazon. And that helps to strip the body or the liver of fat. And we're not just talking about the liver. The liver is where it's initially stored, but I want you to think about like holding your hands like this, and then you have the fat pump poking out between the cells because there's nowhere else for it to go. 
and your body can't pee, you can't pee or uh, poop out fat, you have, your liver needs to literally take that fat, break it down from fat uh, down to water, hydrophilic. It needs to make it water to get it out of the body. So it's a long process, but it's a possible process. You just have to have that fourth um, hidden uh, thing, which is consistency. And we're talking about six months to a year. You can start seeing the fat liver will go away even faster. Your liver can be regenerated 100%. It just takes about a year or two if you have a really damaged liver. So this is lifestyles. This is what I do is not diet. I am literally taking you from the mainstream putting into a different path of um, lifestyle, which is from now on, I'm more conscious about everything I eat, drink, see, feel, work, put myself relationships. You want to like, examine your whole your trajectory in life. You know? So I hope that helped. Um, thank you guys for joining. I don't see anything else. I see one, a question about uh, low estrogen and all the miss, all the Symptoms I mentioned go along with low estrogen. Low estrogen, you're going to want to start with maca. So I'm not sure of your age, but if you start with maca powder, that's a adaptogenic herb. So what adaptogenic herbs do is if you have too much of something, too low of something, okay, so 61. Typically, if that's the case, you have had a hysterectomy. Some women that have had hysterectomies had the low um, uh, estrogen. But depending on what organs you have, okay, so if you don't have the organs that produce the hormone, you gotta add, you gotta add the supplements that create it. So again, we're not using the HRT to put hormones back in your body. You need to stimulate your adrenals. And again, for women, it's the fat cells that actually can put estrogen back in the system as well. So you have your ovaries, your uterus, your fat cells, they create estrogen. So if you have ovaries, yes, all you gotta do is nourish them. So of course you have the, I gave you that list earlier, but those same supplements I gave you, I don't know if you can see my screen still, but let's see, is this it? Yeah. Red clover, black cohosh, those two are for the symptoms, maca and wild yam cream, and salt, salt palmetto is for too much estrogen. I would say maca and wild yam cream and use those consistently, but also remove anything else that is blocking your process, uh, like fake estrogens, xenoestrogens, makeup, perfumes, uh, cleaners, anything like that, that would be a uh, endocrine disruptor. And then you'll start okay. to see progress in weeks, not, not years. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, unfortunately, we have another call that's scheduled at 8.30 for tonight. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to Justin on Instagram and or his uh, email. And um, I'm sure he's going to be happy to give you more information and work with you. Absolutely. I, I have free consultations. So please reach out. And on Instagram, I'll talk to you like on DMs and everything. But if you want an actual session, reach out to me and we can talk about your specific uh, illness or your goals in detail. All right. And just before we close out, we just want everybody to remember one quick takeaway. Um, there's about four things that hinders our health. Um, and we want to be the change in the world that we want to see. And I want everybody to remember this acronym. Hi. If everybody remember hi, they'll remember all four of them. Hormone imbalance, inflammation, insulin resistance, and inconsistency. That's hi. Hey. All right. So if you remember hi, every time you say hi to everybody, just remember those things that's causing you not to be health, fully healthy. And we wish everyone a good night. Let us close as we, let us pray as we close out our meeting. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the information that you have um, given to Justin to give to us. I know, Father, you spoke to us. I know you spoke to me. I pray, dear Lord, that you will help us to, be mindful because everything is about our mind and how we process it and what we believe in. Help us to believe that all the things that you have created naturally is good for our body. Help us, dear Lord, to take that in mind and to watch what we eat and, can, and eat green so that we can be in a healthy state of being. Thank you once more for what you have delivered to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank everyone for coming. We hope to see you next week when we will have...
doctor. Is that Dr. Renee Yuna? Um, yeah, we're going to have doctors. Um, well, not he's not a doctor, but Sebastian Tay, um, he's a missionary, medical missionary.